All right, since the transfer window is coming up, let's take a look at every Premier League club and the players that have always seemed to be linked with your team every damn transfer window without fail. Arsenal, Gonzalo Higuain. There was a time whenever Arsenal fans would hear the name Gonzalo Higuain, they would probably break out in a terrible sweat and panic. For them, that name has become synonymous with false promises. It all started when they spent the summer of 2013 trying to take him from Real Madrid, only to get beaten to the punch by Napoli, before the Argentines scored against Arsenal four months later. Two years later, he was linked with them again. Gunners cleared to sign Gonzalo Higuain. Yep, they ended up keeping Danny Welbeck up top and finished behind Leicester City. The following year, they decided, right, let's put in a half-decent bid for this fella. Not he chooses to sign for Juventus instead. I'm guessing Arsenal fans spent that summer choking on their own rage. Bournemouth, Chris Mepham. Chris Mepham is probably sitting in his Brentford apartment, looking at how well Bournemouth have done this season, and he's ready to smack his head off the goddamn fridge. The cherry seemed to be after the Wales International for the entirety of 2018, having bids of 10 million plus rejected for him both in January and then the summer. Brentford are halfway down the table. The man must be sick of his life. Brighton, Moussa Dembele. Okay, to be fair, there are probably a lot better options than this one for Brighton. But I know that Moussa Dembele, the former Celtic striker, was getting linked with them for a solid six months last year, with Brendan Rodgers having to deny that he told the Frenchman that Brighton were a bigger club. As manager of Celtic, saying that would have been absolute lunacy. Burnley, Jay Rodriguez. Okay, so it's really only been in the last year that Jay Rodriguez has been constantly linked with a return to Burnley, but the rumours are starting up yet again. If I was him, I'd bank on the fact that West Brom are far more likely to be in the top flight next year than Burnley, and I would stay right where I am. Cardiff City, Salomon Aranda. Okay, for Cardiff, I don't really have a player in mind. I don't know. There are probably a lot better options than this one. So Cardiff fans, please put down that sheep and speak up. I'm just going to go for Salomon Ronda. They seemed to be interested in him for ages last summer. Did not get him. Chelsea, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho was the world's superstar of the mid-2000s, and at the time, Chelsea were the new boys with money. So of course, they were going to be linked with the 2005 Ballon d'Or winner. Not only could the man eat his dinner through a letterbox, but he had skills that could put defenders in rehab. So Chelsea seemed to be in for him every year, from 2005 to 2007. The rumours died down for a bit once the man grew a beer belly and got punted out of Barca, but they reared their ugly head yet again in 2010 when AC Milan reportedly tried to get him off their wage bill. Adriano also deserves a shout out. That man seemed to be getting linked with the Blues every five minutes. Good job they didn't sign him, considering the man now lives in a shack. Crystal Palace, Mikel Forsell. If you thought Chelsea only recently started hoarding talented youngsters before spitting them out on a bunch of time-wasting loan deals, no, 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 no. Mikel Forsell only made a handful of appearances during seven years at Stamford Bridge, but shot out on loan at Crystal Palace, Borussia Mönchengladbach, and Birmingham City. Anyway, he scored 18 goals on loan for Palace before returning to December 2001, and the club never seemed to grasp the concept that it was a temporary thing, returning with unsuccessful bids for the next three windows. Come on, guys, Chelsea had big plans for the Finnish striker, chucking him out on a bunch of other loans. The man is 37 now and probably has the pace of a one-legged goat, but the tragic thing is he'd probably still do a job for the Eagles. Everton, Alan Smith. Joe Moutinho is a worthy shout out. The club seems to be as obsessed with that man as James Corden is with deep fried food. But I'm going with Alan Smith, a man who David Moyes also had a scarily intense fixation with. The club failed to prize him from Leeds in May 2004 with a 7 million bid. Funny, that's exactly what Man United paid for him. They then seemed to forget about him while he was out with a busted leg, before returning in the summer 2007, this time losing out to Newcastle. 12 months later, they were back in with a 3 million bid, despite the fact the man had bombed spectacularly in his first year at St. James's Park. Fulham, Cameron Jerome. Cameron Jerome is a man who has been on Fulham's radar for years. God knows why. They had bids of 2 million and then 3.5 million rejected for him by Birmingham City back in August 2011, before returning six years later with a 3 million bid while he was at Norwich. Still did not work. Huddersfield Town, nobody. Okay, Huddersfield fans, you have my permission to shoot me. I don't know. Uh, literally, I, I can't find anyone for Huddersfield. I think it's because of your steady climb through the divisions. Your transfer targets have rapidly developed over time, so you're not really stuck trying to sign the same player every single window. But maybe I'm wrong, and if I am, let me know in the comment section below. Leicester City, Nathaniel Klein. Nathaniel Klein just seems to be the forgotten man at Liverpool these days, doesn't he? He is probably cursing the very existence of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Anyway, having been linked with Leicester during the summer, looks like the Foxes are back in for him in the January transfer window, and to be honest, the man just needs a move. Liverpool, David Villa. Can you imagine if Liverpool had partnered Spain's front two in the Premier League? They could have then chucked David and Gog in the lake, and maybe even won the league. Back in June 2008, the Valencia striker admitted he was keen on the move. Liverpool signed Robbie Keane instead and shoved him on the bench for six months. In 2009, the links resurfaced. They instead wasted half the budget on Aquilani and Glenn Johnson. But it wasn't over. In the winter of 2011, Liverpool were on the verge of replacing Torres with Villa, no, he then breaks his leg and that's the end of that. In December 2012, Brendan Rodgers was supposedly interested, with Liverpool fans at this stage probably just wishing Villa would retire, if only to shut up these anticlimactic rumours. Man City, Alexis Sanchez. Isco is a man who deserves a shout. He seems to have been linked with Man City since he popped through his mother's blood-stained legs. Alexis Sanchez has been linked with them for years, with the club pulling out of a deal for the Udinese star in June 2011, choosing instead to fill their team with Jack Rodwells and Scott Sinclairs. Then, all through 2017, they were heavily linked with the one-way Arsenal forward, with the papers even hinting Raheem Sterling could be involved.
involved in a swap deal. What an insanely great deal that would have been for Arsenal, right? As we all know, he didn't sign, chose the money at Old Trafford instead, and currently spends a Saturday afternoon strolling around the pitch like an old man who escaped the nursing home. Man United, Wesley Schneider. I know the man is probably now tucking into a life-size box of custard creams, but I still wouldn't be surprised to see someone from the sun drag up a potential deal to Old Trafford for Wesley Schneider in January. How he never ended up at that club, I'll never know. For a full two years, you know, as soon as Jose Mourinho had left Inter Milan, leaving the club to flap around the place like an unattended toddler, Schneider was linked with Man United almost on a daily basis. The club were suffering a crisis in midfield, Schneider was arguably the best centre mid in the world at the time, and talks had been going on for a while. In the end, nothing happened, and the club were forced to ring up a retired Paul Scholes to pop down the local shop and buy some boots. Newcastle, Tranquillo Barnetta. Where is Tranquillo Barnetta right now? Probably stuck down the lobby of the Jesmond Dean Hotel, waiting for an Uber that's been delayed by about seven years. That was the story at the time, back in 2011, when Newcastle were trying to sign the Swiss international from Bayer Leverkusen. Things got messy when the agent called the 40k a week offer ridiculous. Jeez, I know. I wouldn't have been surprised to see the lad pick up a second job at Burger King when he's been given such a pittance. Party who scoffed at the agent's remarks. Within a few years, we'd all be scoffing at his career. The club were linked with him a year later when he became a free agent. He signed for Schalke instead. He currently plays for St. Gallen out in Switzerland. If it's any consolation, I'd say he'd take 40k now. Southampton, Marcus Rojo. For some reason, Southampton have always had a thing for Marcus Rojo. Linked with him following the 2014 World Cup, they returned again two years later while he was a Man United outcast. It never happened. Tottenham, Lasana Diara. Joe Cole is definitely a worthy nomination considering he seemed to be getting tipped with a move to White Hart Lane every five minutes. But no, I'll go for Lasana Diara, the most impatient footballer that ever lived. It all started back in the summer of 2008 when one day Ramos tried to prize him from Portsmouth. It only got worse when Harry Renap ended up at Spurs since he was hell bent on dragging every half decent lad of Pompey with him. Instead, Diara got his move to Real Madrid. In August 2011, Spurs were inches away from completing a £10 million deal. It collapsed and you'd assume that was the end of it. No, five years later, the links popped up again with the French international out of Marseille. Instead, off he popped to Al Jazeera for some bizarre reason. Watford, Paul Robinson. Watford don't do too many transfer sagas, but let's go with Paul Robinson. Not the goalie who'd end up scoring against his club from his own box. Instead, it's the former Hornet left back who began his career at Vickers Road and who the club have been trying to re-sign pretty much ever since. West Ham, Sean Wright Phillips. Well, Jermaine Defoe was the obvious one linked with the return to the club every 20 minutes since he left, but I'll go with Sean Wright Phillips. The club looked certain to end his Stamford Bridge Hill in January 2007 in a £10 million deal. Considering the man had effectively ended Dean Ashton's career, you'd think they'd have a bit more sensitivity and common sense. Imagine Ashton stuck in the treatment room, nursing his broken leg, watching the perpetrator trot past him onto the training pitch every day. Good lord. A move never materialised, but they were again linked with him the following year, and then in 2010, and then 2011, even with stories circulating that Ashton was considering suing the man. They stopped getting linked with him once Wright Phillips turned into a dried up old twig of a player. Wolves, Robbie Keane. Okay, all I know is that for the entirety of 2017, Robbie Keane was getting shoved down Wolves' throats whether they wanted him or not. With the club in the middle of a Portuguese revolution, I'm not sure they needed a 37 year old who hadn't played in England in six years.